in my parents' house and takes the um and takes the um our well tries to take our son. So we're literally outside tug of, tug of war with a baby, right? And um at this point my younger brother was incarcerated. Um my older my older brothers had their own home, their own families. They didn't live at home. I was the only one living at home at the time. And so that happened. And um, I, the only way I had got him to leave is I managed to call the police. No, no, no. He locked, he he broke in my parents' house and then wouldn't let me out the house, kept me hostage in the house. And then um, when I told him, when I got the, when I called the police, that's when he was like, oh, I'm taking the baby. And um, I, and listen, I don't care about my baby father taking his son. Um, that doesn't bother me. The only thing was that he wouldn't, he, I didn't have his number. When I decided I don't want to be with him anymore, he, I, um, he would call me private. So I wouldn't have his number and he would not tell me where my child was. So that I didn't like. And so, um, so when I actually started calling the police, he like tried to take off with the baby and we're literally fighting over the baby, tug of war not over the baby. Okay. That was one incident. Okay. So at this point now, everybody agrees that this man cannot come back. I'm done. Okay. My parents come home. I call my mom. I tell her what happened. And she's like, oh my gosh, you know, when they get home, we're just like, you know, it's a wrap. Okay. So it's a wrap. Tell me why. So now we're not together anymore. And, um, we would do, um, Oh, I had went and got a, so at this point when he stole my phone and everything, I had went and got a restraining order against him and I had, the judge had made him have to give me back my phone and, um, I didn't go for full custody. I had just went and got, um, half, um, part, whatever custody is so long ago. I'm sorry, you guys, um, custody, whatever. Cause he didn't show up to court. Um, and I just wasn't trying to get full custody because I wasn't trying to be a single mom. I didn't make him by myself. I just felt like, you know, like you're like this with me, but I know you really love your child. So just stay the heck away from me and help with this, with this baby we procreated. So anyways, so, um, so now we're, we're apart. We're like literally not living together. So I move out my parents' house and I move in with roommates. Now at this point, we um when he would get my child i didn't have any physical contact with him and that's because him and my younger brother had gotten into a fight once my younger brother came home and he hears about what happened and he sees the door and he just like like what the heck you know and my younger brother was literally like young my baby's father is older than me he was younger than even me so when he fought my baby brother it really put a wedge into how i felt about him because i just felt like you know like that's my that's my kin, like, and especially because my brother was trying to, to defend me and he was young, like, you know what I mean? And it just, that fight had gotten really ugly and it just really made me look at him in a different light. And I just did not respect him. And, and at that point, um, although he was my, my child's father, I just did not want nothing, like, like stay away from me. So I had the restraining order. So we would have, I would have other people like my dad or my mom or, you know, other people trade off our child or whatever. So no physical contact with each other for a long time. I wouldn't even, we moved, um, I moved and he wouldn't even know where I lived. Fast forward. At some point, my dumb A lets him, um, come get the baby or drop off our son. I think he dropped him off at the house cause I didn't have a car and I wasn't living at home with my parents. And so, um, I'm not telling the story in the sequence it is actually, cause I just thought about it. Prior to him breaking down my parents' door, I already had a restraining order on him because we already, I remember we were already, he was already not allowed to know where the other house was. And we was already had, see, and that's what I'm saying. You be in these relationships, why you go back? I don't know. I don't know, you guys. It was so many times I would tell him, I'm leaving you. I'm leaving you. I'm done. I'm tired of this. And I just, I just stayed. I just kept going back. I just continued and when I get with him and then I realize he's the same person, he's on the same wave. Y'all, I'm starting to think of all these different random stories now that I have, I forgot to say, like, like there was times where I was pregnant and, um, um, literally running out of houses, walking barefoot in the middle of the night because I thought that we were going to have a chill night and I'm over his friend's house with him and he's putting his hands on me and his, of course his friends is minding his business and I ain't got no way home and I'm just, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Anyways, a hot mess. 
so um back to this time so now he knows where i stay at my new place and um he's like drop he's dropping off the baby and he slapped as i'm reaching down he puts the baby first of all i should have knew this was a red flag anyway he puts the car seat down on the ground and as i went to go get the car seat he slaps me slaps me hops in the car drive off like he would do stuff like that even petty when i decided when he realized i was really done with him and i was really not messing around with him and this is one of the times um i had let him come stay at my new place and we got into a physical fight there. But my roommate at the time, she just knew what I had been through with him. And she wasn't okay with that. So I had called the police. And even her dad was like, why you call the police on him? Well, I cannot stand how many times people had felt like I was in the wrong. Like, anyways. So we had came up with a band. Me and her, like, this dude is not allowed here. He can't. So um, he was when he realized I was really done with him, you guys, he started to try to punish me. And punish me, like I said, calling me private. So I could never call and say, hey, you know, the baby needs this. Or, hey, I need help with this. Or, hey, you know, I got some place to be. Like, you think you can keep. Like, I was literally on his time. Like, whenever he decided he wanted to get a son or whenever he decided he wanted to help, that's what. And if I ever asked him for anything, he would tell me his favorite line was to figure it out. Figure it out. Figure it out. You want to be by yourself? Do it by yourself. That was his favorite line to me after I had the baby. You guys, it was terrible. There was a portion of time that that I was literally a single mom. Like I was I was literally like a single mom for a while. Um because he would just do as when he wanted to, do as he can. He literally used our son against me sometimes. Like like I said, we would meet up to just exchange the child and he would use that time to spit in my face, to to slap me, you know, just just to be just to be just terrible to me. Um so at this point, I knew once I had the baby and I went through all this stuff, I finally, finally got to a point where I was just like, I'm done. Like, and I, and I, and I knew I was been done before I was actually physically done. I had mentally left before I had physically left. And when I physically left, I, there was no getting back. There was not, when I finally, when I finally was like, I'm through you guys, I was literally done. It was a wrap. Now. Fast forward, uh, for whatever reason, at some point, I can't recall, I I had uh, hung out with him, okay, at his folks' house. Fast forward, this is like after we broke up, this is this is after I moved on, this is like, like we for sure know like we're done, but he still had feelings for me and wanted to work it out. Now, I don't recall why I was, oh, I think he had his son, um, at this point, he had gotten way better with his child so he um you know he you know he was no longer being an a-hole to me about it he was doing his part as a father um okay so uh this was the last time he ever put his his hands on me so we had went i have i had spent the time with him why i was with him i don't know we get into an argument about a man another man that i was talking to and um he steals my phone again Okay, now I can't call my friends and stuff. So we're literally fighting in these people's houses. They're not doing nothing. Okay, not trying to help. He's holding me hostage. His his favorite thing to do, holding me hostage, not letting me leave, not letting me call. So I finally get to a point where I'm able to call um, a friend of mine or whatever. I don't remember how I did it. So she comes and um, he throws my phone. Um, he damages my phone and um, breaks it. Um, which wasn't even my phone at the time, by the way. I was actually borrowing the phone from somebody else at the time. And so he damages the phone, um, just gives me a hard time, like I said. And then so at, I was just like, you know what? We can't even be friends. Like we, like at this point, like we can't even be friends. Like, you know, like I don't even know why I even thought that we could hang out or that anything would be different or that you changed. Like, you know, like I was just like, somebody show you who you are the first time, believe them, like. And um, that was it. You guys, I moved. I moved. I put distance between us. Um, I didn't entertain a conversation about us getting back together um, or anything. Like, I, I would just, I just didn't look back. And I remember for so long afterwards, my family members and my friends really thought, like, I would go back to him. He, um, they really thought that we would get back together and stuff again and, I haven't, I haven't not, this was, this was years ago, and, um, 
now we co-parent. Um, I hope that he's a, a better man now. I, I know that he's doing way better as a parent. We and him, we still have fights every now and then, but they never get physical. We are able to be in the same room. We actually just celebrated my son's birthday together as a whole. As a whole. Um, I moved on. He's moved on. He brought his girlfriend. He met my dude. And you know what I mean? Um, I, I, what I learned about myself was that, um, like I said, you know, if somebody does, does it to you once, they'll do it to you twice, um, and get out before it's too late. You know, you might not think that this person is capable of doing something and they might not be their intentions and stuff happens and things go too far. Like, you know what I mean? And, um, the don't believe nothing that they tell you in a, in a, a domestic violence relationship other than the harm that they're going to inflict on you believe them when they tell you that they'll that whatever harm what they say they'll do they'll do but as far as like nobody's ever going to want you he used to tell me that you know nobody's ever going to want me um that i'm you know that i'm this and i'm that like just really trying to break me down and he did leaving that relationship you guys actually is what how i end up turning to um to dancing and I, I took so much power in stripping and you guys can go check out my story time um, about how I used to be a dancer because I actually had just got out of that domestic violence relationship and was being a single mom when I had started dancing. And um, so you guys can go watch that video for more you know details on that. But um, my my I have to do a whole lot of repair to got, to get to know who I was. And to get to not only get to know who I was as a person, but to just love myself. And also, it wasn't until I got into a new relationship that I realized that I was bringing my past trauma with me because I would physically touch and hit my boyfriend. Um, and he wasn't hitting me. And I, he would tell me, like, you know, like, stop hitting me. And I, I had and, and I didn't realize I was doing it so much and often. And I think it was just because I was taught that. Because there was times in a relationship where if I didn't feel like fighting you guys, like it got to a point, you guys, where, like I said, I think that he thought that he was doing me good. Um, there was things that he taught me in a relationship that I have used in my life, but it was more, it was more of like lessons learned than anything. He would like, um, there was a point where I had stopped. I remember one time I had stopped hitting him. Um, I used to always fight him back. And one time I just like, one time I just got to a point where I just balled up and I wouldn't, I didn't even fight. I was just like waiting for it to be over. And he stopped and he was just like, what are you doing? What are you doing? Like, don't ever let somebody put their hands on you. Like, what are you doing? Like, you better not ever just let somebody hit you and not hit them back. Like, that's how, that's how I knew I had to leave because mentally, I just knew this man was crazy. Like he loved me, but he was like, like I said, like, it was like one of those love is blind. Like you're going to, you're going to really physically hurt me like, and not mean it. And then it's going to be too late. I'm going to be gone. You know what I mean? And, I, and I'll be damned if I let that happen because like, what the heck, what do you, how are you going to be beating on somebody? And then you tell them, don't ever let somebody just hit on you. You better fight back. And woo, woo, woo. like, it would be stuff like that. Like I remember one time I was pregnant and, um, he was like, he had threatened to leave and I and walked off and I had took off running after him. You guys barefoot pregnant i'm talking about belly out middle of the night chasing after him begging for him to come back and then he turned to me and he was just like like what are you doing like don't you ever beg a man to to uh you know like basically whatever like wh whatever he said and it was just like you're the you're putting me in these positions and you're making me this person and then you're telling me toughen up toughen up you know like toughen up you know and that was really his thing he just really felt like I should have been tougher, you know, because I'm a very sweet person. I'm very, you know, I'm very, um, just like, uh, with a heart of gold, just very open. And so I think he wanted me to be stronger because I was going through so much stuff in my life with my parents at the time. And just in general, my emotions were whacked, whacked. You guys got to keep in mind, I was, a lot of this time I was pregnant, so I would cry a lot. So, um, that's the end of the story time, you guys, like I said, um, I took some stuff like that into my new relationship and then I realized it and it took some healing and I got in better and I don't put my hands on, on my man. Um, I'm not in a relationship with somebody that will beat me or mentally, um, 
do me wrong. I took some time. It took a lot of affirmations. It took a lot of healing for myself. And I had and and I went through different stages of finding myself and and having love for myself. But I'm just so glad that I that I got me. And now that I got me, you guys, I refuse to ever let anybody put me in a position where I will ever compromise myself again for them. Um, a part of me, and this is going to sound crazy, a part of me is kind of grateful that I went through that my first go round in love, my first time, because I actually got into a relationship with somebody afterwards that had choked me. Um, and I never been back with them since like, because of that, I was just like, no, like I, you know what I mean? Like, it's just certain things now that I'm just like, mm -mm, nope not happening like you know so it has definitely made me stronger but i wouldn't advise anybody to continue to go through that just for the sake of becoming stronger because there's so many stories where women can't sit in front of the camera and tell you their story about a domestic violence relationship because they're gone they're, they're not coming back you know what i mean and so i just i just refuse to have been one of those people and i hope that somebody watching this can find the strength to leave um and the way that you go about it because i i know somebody's gonna ask me like how because like i told you guys he was everywhere he it, i felt like i couldn't there was uh, there was a time where i was ready to leave and i physically could not because he was literally everywhere and my advice would be you just have to get up and go it doesn't matter if you have to leave your own house if you got to leave and start over when i left you guys when i moved I literally was sleeping on couches. I went from having my own bedroom in my parents' home, my own bedroom in my apartment, to sleeping in a roach-infested apartment. One bedroom where the bedroom was even our bedroom. I was sharing a couch. My son would be on another couch. And it was just like, I just had to, I just had, I needed a new change. And I knew that if I just stayed in the area that I was in, I was not going to be able to, um, leave him completely you know what i mean and another advice and it's gonna sound bad but i fully stand behind this the one the way that you get over one is that you find another okay and so i definitely had somebody else well actually a few after him and once i experienced a, a different and i was treated better i just refused to go back to that because let me tell you something you guys there are times that afterwards when you're when you leave somebody um there were times that after our breakup you guys i would go i would think about him or i would think about us and i could it was hard to remember the bad times if that makes any sense because it had been so long it was harder for me to try to remember in particular things like it was sort of like even now telling the story like there's some stuff and I'm, I'm sure I forgot a lot and it's starting to come to me now. And now we're so deep in the, the, the story time. I'm going to leave it at where it's at. But there's so many different things I'm starting to think of that I had literally forgot. And I think that's just our body and our, our just our conscience purposely like just trying to forget the bad. But it was easier to remember the good. And the only thing that would keep me from going back as many times because I did go back. But as many times as I thought about it was basically I, I used to say over and over again. All those times that I would cry, I used to always say over and over again, I never want to feel like this again. I never want to ever feel like this again. And so, but I couldn't recall specific things that he would had that he had done to me. I just remember thinking to myself, you never want to feel like that again. That was the lowest part of your life. Like, no, I wouldn't say lowest, but it was a very low. That was a low part of your life. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you never want to feel like that again. Like, you weren't happy. So, um, whenever you get to even thinking about the good times with somebody, like if you have to talk, talk, say it out loud or just sit, like find, find something that will remind you from that space to where you can remember that hurt. Because even though they say you're supposed to let hurt go, it is very important to hold on and never forget certain things that way that you don't repeat the same mistake twice. All right. Well, I appreciate you guys for hanging in here this long. Thumbs up this video. Thank you so much for watching. Um, hopefully, you guys come back to my channel and check out another video again in the future. Bye.